President and CEO of Snug Harbor Cultural Center and Botanical Garden, and I'm um, joined by my colleague at, at a six foot distance over there, uh, <laughs> Jenny Kelly, our business manager here, and our incredible special guest who we're so excited to wow him today, um, James Petamano. So cool to be here. We've just kidnapped James and pr brought him into a secret part of Snug Harbor. This is part of a, a larger series that we're, we are so grateful to Cassandra Properties and to James and to the whole team um, of Secret Snug Harbor. We are uncovering and discovering some of the most incredible architecture, infrastructure, all of that in, in the borough um, at the cultural anchor of our borough here at, here at Snug Harbor. So right now, we've just entered the secret tunnel. Snug Harbor was sailor to Snug Harbor, right? So this was founded upon the will of Robert Richard Randall, a privateer, found, you know, had made all his fortune at the sea, had no direct heirs, and wanted to bequeath and create a retirement home for, quote, aged, decrepit, and worn out sailors. He was gonna do this on his farmland in, you know, the, the north of the big city uh, in New York City, which was really the area around Washington Square Park. And, um, and they, over the, over the course between 1801 and the 1820s or so, we were starting to see that maybe this property was a little bit valuable, maybe it shouldn't be a home right. for, uh, for, so for retired <laughs> sailors. So they convinced the trustees to purchase a big swath of land on the beautiful Caldon Cole, purchased it for $10,000, uh, 130 acres, <laughs> and um, started Sailor Snug Harbor. And the first dormitory opened, which is our main hall C, in 1831. And then over the course of the next, of the next, you know, the whole rest of the century, it becomes the most well-endowed charitable institution of its kind. Think about the rent rolls that are coming off of that, that property that's then funding this site. Mm -hmm. So they, by by the end of, I think it's like by the 1830s, there's like 30 something sailors here. By 1900, there's a thousand. But this tunnel, I mean, we don't have a ton, ton of really great documented history, but we know this tunnel, where we're seeing now, would have connected the on-site power plant to the rest of Snug Harbor, you know, really be, being a, a service tunnel, right? This place was such a completely self-contained community. There's a hospital, cemetery, library, dormitories, you know, Booker ba Baker, candlestick maker, farm, power plant, everything on site here. And so we have some substantiated and unsubstantiated things we can tell you about the tunnel maybe as we move. But I, I, I can tell you what, where one way went, the other way went, and where the other secret way went. So shall we walk? Yeah. Rock. <laughs> So do we know when, what year this was actually okay. constructed? And when we get to the right at some point, we're going to hit the collapse, right? Jenny? Yeah. That towards the right would have gone under the hospital that was built in 1850 okay. towards the sanitarium that was built in 1897. You have to presume that this was, you know, sometime in there to bring, what, at that point, electric services, Steam. other, you, see, you know, anything over that side. And then to this way, it goes towards the front of the campus, it was even earlier built, like that's, that's starting from 1830s to 1850s. Wow. And then there's a third part that is a little unsubstantiated that went from the hospital solarium to where the morgue is. So we come to our first crossroads. <laughs> this is the, low, the road less lit. That's to the collapse. I'm happy to bring you guys down. Yeah. Let's do it. It's a really Secret nice tunnels, idea. collapses. Yes. Get, uh, I'm in. Yes. <laughs> So for anyone who's familiar with Snug Harbor, right now we're, we're probably under, I would say we're under the South Meadow. Um, ish, ish. Yeah, or we're headed that way. We're headed that way, and we're and where the hospital built in 1850 would have been. We're heading towards what the beautiful, huge solarium built in 1897 was, and that was under um, Governor Tass. Do you know that Thomas Melville, Herman Melville's brother, was the governor here? I did not. So, but then they say that they say that the brother was visiting a lot while he was while he was writing Moby Dick. Every time I come here, it's you find something else, something new. There's a new discovery around every corner. It's such a remarkable place. But then to tie some of that history back and feel it down here, it's really remarkable yeah. to walk through and touch and feel and you know the history here yeah. it's really okay. quite and, remarkable and the intentionality of our, i mean the, 
just the, the forward thinking of having a charitable rest home like that and like you know making it what it what it means in from an infrastructure standpoint in the 19th century to have that on all on site here and think about that that's for a thousand men you get sailors that's it ahead of its time like outside of its time concept these guys were given two brooks brothers suits we came here had you know three meals a day listening to music reading books you know having a full end of their life <laughs> Any race, creed, color, everybody was allowed. This is a really remarkable facility. During coronavirus, we really heard our community. To, I mean, I can't even tell you the people who reached out and said, this is my solace, this is my peace. Thank you for staying open. Thank you for giving me, giving me that. And as we move forward, we, we don't want to forget that. Yeah.